on this week's episode of Bayou Wild TV. We're going crawfishing. No, not like you've seen on past shows. The crawfish in this episode are raised in a massive indoor facility and resemble something out of a sci-fi movie. Well, he's soft <laughs> and uh, vulnerable, but he actually just shed his shell and it looks like when they're sh you know, shedding them, it takes a lot of energy so they kind of look like they're drunk or just tired. You're like us, prepare to be fascinated with the world of soft shell crawfish. Closed captioning is brought to you by Global Outdoors. Find your next adventure and share your experiences with others by downloading the Global Outdoors mobile app or visiting globaloutdoors.com. Every day, we strive to preserve traditions that have spanned generations. Around every turn of the bayou, Mother Nature reveals unique people, places, and experiences. And the bounty of animals and fish. Well, in Louisiana, we just call that land yak. I'm Don Dubuque. I'm Chris Lacop. I'm Captain Martha Spencer. Join us as we document the adventure sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Louisiana today and we're doing some crawfish farming. May not look like your normal crawfish farm, but it's something a little different. They've never heard of it. They, they say, you, you do what? I said, yeah, I, I shed soft shell crawfish. about Bayou Wild is that we're always finding cool, new, and sometimes obscure things like this. And uh, not being a Louisiana native, I didn't know it existed. But I also think that a lot of folks that are born and raised here didn't know that there is a market for this. And that's one reason why I'm trying to help promote them and work with them a little bit more is because, granted, they're soft shell crawfish, but it's still Louisiana products. Guess what? What is that? Ooh, that's right. But that's just the process of how they grow. And they got a new set of lungs, claws, antennas, and it should just kick and be out of there. Sometimes they get hung up, but there it goes. He's like, oh, I feel so much lighter. I was in the construction business back in the 70s, and it was so competitive I wasn't enjoying myself. And I, I saw where LSU was starting some of these trial trays. This was 40 years ago. So I'm up there in age. Um, and I just never stopped. So uh, I knew you had to do volume to try to make a living at it. And it's, it's actually six months out of the year um, working. And then the rest of the season, you either move your product or you get to go fishing or do other things fun in life. Big boys getting ready to come out right there. All three of them.
One of the reasons why Double D has been around for 50 years is because we are consistent with what built the business. And we go to great lengths to make sure that when you bring a, a deer or a hog or whatever it may be, your meat stays your meat all the way through the process. But we want to be as true to the original intent, which is a local meat company. And, and that's something that we want to maintain for as long as the Lord lets us do it. I'm Miss Louisiana Julia Claire Williams on behalf of the Louisiana Propane Dealers. We're all used to bad weather in Louisiana and we know the benefits of clean, portable propane gas during those emergencies. But if your propane tank is ever damaged in a storm, you should have it inspected by a certified propane dealer. And if you ever smell gas, turn the system off at the tank and call your dealer immediately. Propane is safe energy for everyone and we want to keep it that way. They've never heard of it. They, they said, you, you do what? I said, yeah, I, I shed soft shell crawfish. Well, he's soft <laughs> and uh, vulnerable, but he actually just shed his shell. And it looks like when they're sh you know, shedding them, it takes a lot of energy. So they kind of look like they're drunk or just tired. And he shed his shell and started swimming around like he was happy to be free of it. So. I can imagine why he'd be pretty vulnerable in the other tank. He's got no protection now, but he's going to be vulnerable for other reasons in a few minutes. <laughs> Certainly not something you see every day. When uh, when we got this story idea, I was automatically very curious because I'm interested in seafood and all things animals and coming out to this facility I just kind of felt like the little kid at the aquarium that gets to play with the skates and the cool stuff you get to stick your hands in and I just found myself sorting out crawfish shells and picking out the soft shelled ones. It's actually kind of therapeutic. Take us through the stages of when the crawfish, these have just come from the spillway, what happens to them from there? Okay, these crawfish are exactly like the ones you buy when you boil them. We get them in 35 pound sacks, and I may take on 50, 60 sacks a load. But when we unload them, they have turtles in them, they got, they got crawfish food, they got grass, they got dirt, so we clean them all up. And we don't feed them for two days after they come in. We're trying to get them strong. Then after two days, we start feeding them this uh, shrimp food, is what it is. And then we feed them daily until they become primos. But from, from here on back, I've got uh, almost 300 trays, and it's about 35 pounds to 40 pounds per tray. And we'll go through these crawfish every day, feed them. I have guys that are cleaning them and they pull in what you call the pre-molts. As you can see, he's not biting me because he's getting ready to release his, his shell. So it's very important to pull the pre-molts. And as soon as he fills up a bucket, he comes and displaces them in the pre-molt bin. So I learned the basics of crawfish anatomy at Crawfish Haven in Kaplan. But I didn't know that they molt several times. Yeah. So how many times is it going to go through this process till it's ready to eat? 
Well, they'll do it one time in my system, okay. but out in the wild, they'll shed two times a week um, until they get mature. This one's getting ready to come out. And once they mature, they will stop shedding. They'll stop growing. It seemed to take them a lot of energy. I noticed some of the ones that were shedding just kind of looked like they were exhausted. Well, that's the most stressful time of their life yeah. is when they shed, especially out in the wild. They're vulnerable to a bass or any kind of right. fish to eat them. How long is the whole process from when you get them out of the spillway that's to good, the soft shell? Great question. Um, anywhere from two weeks to five weeks. A and crab, you can do a this. crab is, is like a red line. They'll do right. it within two or three days. Wow. These crawfish sometimes takes, like I said, uh, a week to, to five weeks. Then when it's a full moon, there's a, a much heavier pop, I call it. Okay. A shedding. We, we don't have but two guys here working, plus myself. And you said that you have to do it around the clock. For what reason? Like, why can't you just leave them and let them all mold? Well, they'll start getting leather shell, okay. what you call it. If, if they, we run these mulching trays every three hours, and then once we pull them, we put them in like 30 degree water, well, 34 degree water, and it stops the process of them hardening back up. Ah. They just, they stop their uh, growth. Interesting. To the untrained eye, the thousands of crawfish in these stacked holding tanks may all look alike, but a closer look shows how minor differences in color indicates a mud bug ready for a new shell. You see the redness in it? He's not ready to shed. Up here is my feeding crawfish, and you can just tell the difference in the color. And actually, if you if you squeeze his back a little bit, it gives. It, it's, it's getting ready to release its shell. But if it releases its shell up here, the little soft shell will be eaten by these guys. So they're going through and pulling what you call pre molts maybe five or six per tray, and putting it in the bucket, then releasing them back down here. Okay, this one's getting ready to shed. Which one? This one. Okay. That's a, that's a male. That's that's his slip there. And see how he's dark around the, the, the edges. Uh huh. He, he'll he's a primo, so he's going to shed. This one will not shed again. He's got the spurs on his legs. And that's so he can mate. That's how he hooks up with the, the female. Uh huh. At what time of day do they most of the activity happen? Probably about noon. Whenever the warmest part of the day is when they they shed the heaviest. So if you see like one like a this. Big one, Big one over there, shit. Oh yeah. I'll pull him over oh yeah, there. I see him. Right by the pipe. Yeah. Even though he's he's big, that's a select. He's gonna shed a shell. And they that they And that's how we size them. We, we have selects and we have um, uh, just a twenty-four count. It's a twelve count and twenty-four count. That's his shell right here. Right. That's a large and this is a select. A select. That's the difference. Well, it looks like a lot of work. I mean, this one looks like he's dead, but he's just he, working hard to get rid of his shell. He may not make it. Okay. We do have quite a few of these, and that's normally because they're new crawfish coming in. Uh huh. They're not quite strong enough, and like I said, that's the most stressful time of their life. And did you know that crawfish, like oysters, have pearls too? Delta Marina is Plaquemines Parish Fishing One Stop. 
Get live bait, fuel, ice, tackle, and marine supplies. Then launch into the world's most productive saltwater fishing. Return to the fishing cleaning station, relax in first-class cabins overlooking the bayou, all in Delta Marina's safety video monitored parking lot. Need a fishing charter guide? Delta Marina can hook you up. Cook your catch in your kitchenette or dine in the upstairs restaurant. Visit Delta Marina for a day or a week. Stop in just off Highway 11 down Rosemary Drive in Empire. Visit the deltamarina.com. Want to be seen on a Bayou Wild episode? Sign up for our Cajun Invasion wild pheasant hunt in the remote hills of South Dakota in mid-November. Bad River Bucks and Birds provides lodging, meals, transportation, dogs, and bird cleaning. Details at DonTheOutdoorsGuy.com. Continuing this week's episode, we're at LTE Incorporated near Ethel, Louisiana, where Louisiana's number one crustacean takes on a different and much more alien-like figure. So once they've kicked out, then what happens? Okay, once they're kicked out, every three hours we run these pre-molds so they don't start getting leather chill. If you hold, if you don't pull them, in about five hours, six hours, they're going to get them. And that's how I keep count, there it goes. Every time you find a shell like this, you have a soft shell. But anyway, we take this, and we're going, going to put them in cold water. It's about 34 degrees. All right, these are actually the soft shells. They, they've already molted out. This water is 34 degrees, so we just take them, empty them in here, and it stops them from hardening back up. And tomorrow, they'll be real lethargic, not moving very much, and we'll clean them and package them the next day. And this just goes on seven days a week. It's like a, like a dairy farm, there ain't no stopping. From here, we move to the packaging room, where staff carefully removes some of the fat and tediously prepares each crawfish for packaging. Now here's where we learn that like an oyster, soft shell crawfish have pearls too. And the calcium deposits, each one of the soft shells has a little pearl in it. And that's, that's what they save behind their head. That's a little calcium. And that, that'll dissolve and it'll harden the shell back up. All right, this is the, the large crawfish. And what we're doing, we're sealing it on this Trigon Intact machine. It'll take all the air out. And you just take the, the roll. Just close it, and that's it. It's sucking all the air out right now and conforming around the each crawfish. Now my old machine just did one at a time, so this is kind of speeds up the process. Exactly. They'll be rock solid in a couple hours. Coming up next, get out the batter and heat up the oil. It's soft shell frying time. Hey, look who's here. <laughs> Hey, we sure hope y'all enjoying Bayou Wild Season 7 as much as we're enjoying the food and the spirits here at Southside Cafe and Slide. I've never been here and not had a crowd. It doesn't matter what day you come, what day you eat, when you got food like this. I mean, that's mine. You, you, I might share, but the tuna dip is obviously. Maybe I'll arm wrestle you. <laughs> anyway, come by and see us. We're going to be here two Mondays a month. Check the schedule on Southside Cafe, also our Facebook page. Come by and talk a little fishing with us and enjoy a really good meal. And, and sometimes. win some prizes. Yeah, we were going to do a gift card today, so uh, let's, let's pick our, our first winner. Come by and you might be a big winner too. You know you're going to win with the food here at Southside Cafe. We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. 
Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. Dreams to provide hope, to provide spiritual healing and strength, to provide moments of happiness and relief in the hardest of times. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join huntofalifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit huntofalifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference. We're here in Ethel, Louisiana, and we are going to be cooking up some soft shell crawfish with Chef John Raisin from the mm -hmm. Louisiana Seafood Promotion Promotion and Marketing Board. There you go. And you can see that we've already cleaned these. Mm -hmm. Essentially, they're like a, a crab and that you can right. eat everything, but you took the fat off because when you package these, the fat doesn't freeze mm -hmm. as well. It doesn't freeze as well. All right, so let's get to work. All right. Well, what we'll do is we'll dredge a couple. Got a little bit of, uh, is it flour or cornmeal? This is flour with just a little bit of seasoning and a little, uh, little Cajun seasoning on it, salt, pepper, a little garlic. I like to do the double dip method myself too. Yeah, oh, I love it. something you would see at an Asian restaurant, like on a top mm -hmm. of a sushi roll, tempura style. Right. Maybe just the tail. Yeah, maybe just the tail or... And do you find that a lot of restaurants are uh, carrying this, or is it kind of hard to, to find? They're kind of hard to find still, uh, and that's one reason why I'm trying to help promote them and work with them a little bit more is because, granted, they're soft shell crawfish, but it's still Louisiana products. How pretty does it look? They're, they're really beautiful. These are just about done. But what's cool is that these are wild caught, locally sourced exactly. Louisiana. Exactly. They are wild caught seafood. Of these are already finished, so we need to pull in the ringer taste tester, the, taste the tester. crawfish expert himself. All right, Don. This is it. All right. Goes for the claw first. All right, my that's turn. The, that's the best thing. The sable. All right, really good. So if you were going to serve this up at a restaurant, how would you plate it up? What would you garnish it I with? I would use the crawfish like this as a garnish. Okay. And on top of what? On a top seafood? of like, uh, do your blackened catfish with some uh, crawfish etouffee or something, and then just put that right on, put a couple right on top of them. So it's the lanyard to a meal. It's, it's the not lanyard necessarily to a the whole meal. meal. Or you can use them like an appetizer. Okay. Do this with a little bit of... Uh, Maybe some fried vegetables too? Some fried vegetables, some fried green beans, kind of like you would do and a crawfish bowl. So if you want to get these, call your favorite restaurant, tell them they need to find some soft shell crawfish because yep. they are delicious. Yep. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. At Parish Coffee, we wanted to create a coffee brand that people would love to drink every day. A medium roast, 
are, are nice, bright, nutty coffees. Our dark roast coffees are smooth and rich. I think it's important for consumers to recognize that sometimes it, it's your neighbor that you're supporting. People can go to parishcoffee.com to find the entire selection of coffees. Want to be seen on a Bayou Wild episode? Sign up for our Cajun Invasion Wild Pheasant Hunt in the remote hills of South Dakota in mid-November. Bad River Bucks and Birds provides lodging, meals, transportation, dogs, and bird cleaning. Details at DonTheOutdoorsGuy.com. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. As the saying goes, time flies when you're having fun. And our few short hours at LTE Incorporated was not just fun, but also fascinating. Where do you consider this industry? Is it in its infancy, medium, or pretty much saturated? Where is it at? Oh, what point in, is it at? It's infancy. It, it is not even really, not many people know about the South Shore Crawl. And, uh, and you supply a lot of restaurants and distributors here in Louisiana. Is there a market for this, and could you keep up with a demand nationwide like our crawfish have become? Um, I doubt it. You probably need more uh, growers. Uh, I've never, I've been able to sell out everything I've produced every year in 40 years, except last year with the COVID. I had maybe 30, 40 cases left over. Well, what Yankees don't know won't hurt them. <laughs> Don't tell nobody, it's our secret. Soft shell crawfish. They're fun to watch, and I think kids would enjoy this just as much as uh, they would seeing an alligator hatch. It's just, it's something different, and uh, it's neat to know that it's all locally sourced, and they taste pretty darn good too. I actually love people coming in and just getting blown away by seeing these little things come out of their shells. You know, it's something, even kids, you know, they bring classrooms sometimes over here. And um, I, I think that's what I, I like, seeing their eyes open and, and something new and said they never knew they had such a thing. There seems to never be a shortage of unique experiences in Louisiana's rich culture where we appreciate the hard work and passion that is always by you wild.